So for a long time, um, positions of power within the European Union and within uh, European countries have been held by people who had anti-nuclear biases. Not all the countries, obviously, but a lot of them that, that, that counted, just, such as Germany, but also such as France, for instance. Um, so what is happening now is that we see that these terms are ending. Uh, one of these terms was the, was the term uh, from Franz Timmermans, and Franz Timmermans was a Dutch guy who was against nuclear power very, very strongly. And he has always tried to make building a lot of renewables the goal instead of actually curbing emissions. So what you see is when you look at European legislation that was made and passed in the past 15 years, let's say, it, it was pretty much always uh, very heavily uh, influenced by pro-renewable sentiments. Nuclear was never mentioned or if it was mentioned, it, it, it was being mentioned in the same breath with legacy uh, power generation, such as coal, gas, and oil. So right now, things are changing, uh, and it's changing for the better. Now, it already was changing for the better, but I think that the appointments of this new uh, these new commissioners is, is showing, uh, showing uh, promise. So let's see what it all has to say. So the new commissioners have been uh, have been selected, uh, and, and let me go to the one that is most important for us. The Czech government have basically said, okay, uh, we will put forward Joseph Sikelab, and Czechia is is very pro nuclear. They are working on uh, new nuclear power plants, uh, and let's just see what Euractiv has to say about this guy, and, and then we'll we will go forward to, to give some more perspective. Uh, so Sikala is active on the energy ag agenda, promoting the development of renewable and nuclear energy in his country with an interest in fair competition and the international market. So, so this is basically uh, a very short, very brief introduction, this Sikala guy. Um, this here is much much more interesting. This this comes from uh, CE from CE Energy News. Um, so here's a particularly interesting um, inter interesting section because he still talks as the uh, minister for e econ economic affairs and trade in, in in the Czech Republic, and he says our efforts to develop nuclear energy in the Czech Republic are not limited to the successful tender for new units in Dukovani and the preparation of new sources for the Temelin side, said the Minister of Industry and Trade, that, that was it, uh, Joseph Sikala. Small and medium-sized reactors can constitute an integral part of the country's future energy mix. They can provide consumers and companies not only with electricity, but also with heat, replacing the end of life coal facilities. Furthermore, he added, the program for the construction of small modular reactors offers a great opportunity for the Czech economy. The production of nuclear facilities and substantial involvement in the supply chain, similar to large units, the contract we have entered into with CHES will guarantee that the state's security interests are safeguarded in their development. So, just looking at how this person speaks about nuclear developments in 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 the Czech Republic uh, tells us that it, you know he he thinks that it is a uh, a an integral part of any functioning economy. Basically, uh, he he certainly outlines why it is important for the Czech Republic to have uh, these uh, nuclear power plants. Now there's there's some 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 interesting uh, stuff going on, but but the 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 task that lies before him is a bit may may be a bit different than the task that he had in the Czech Republic because when we look at Europe, uh, the situation is a is a, is a bit confused at at this moment. So what I've made here is a simple map. Um, I've highlighted uh, a couple of countries in this bright green color, France, the Netherlands, Sweden, Finland, then you have Poland, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, and then Slovenia, Croatia, Croatia. 
and then I've highlighted some, these are the countries that are operating nuclear power plants or uh, really want to build new nuclear power plants. So they, they, they have a, a firm commitment, right? Then we have these light green countries. These are the countries that have, uh, you know, where either the government has expressed uh, positive interest in new nuclear uh, developments or are even pushing towards uh, you, you know, having having a policy that says we are going to build new nuclear power plants, or there are uh, very great um, private enterprises ongoing there that want to push the nuclear uh, agenda forward. Now, Belgium, I've I've, I've created, uh, I've given this this same color. The reason why is because they're still uh, on the phase out track. Uh, even though they have said, okay, we are going to uh, keep a couple of our nuclear power plants open for longer, um, that still doesn't guarantee that they that they are going to keep uh, nuclear running for you know well up in the 2040s, for instance. Um, the Baltics, I think, are particularly promising, uh, mainly because of uh, Fermi Energy in Estonia. Norway is a pretty interesting case. A lot of positive sounds coming out of Norway uh, concerning nuclear. Denmark is a bit, you know, I I don't know whether I, I, I've mis, mischaracterized them at this moment. And then there's Italy, and Italy is also clearly, clearly uh, backtracking away from being a country that wants to ban nuclear and, and, and becoming a country that says we want to... Uh, re-engage in nuclear and, and make sure that we can start using nuclear power uh, to produce electricity. Now, Spain, I've, I've made orange because Spain is really teetering on the knife's edge at this moment. They are, they are pushing hard for the for a nuclear exit, and they, they, it doesn't, doesn't look like there's, there's going to be a, a, a massive turnaround of sentiment anytime soon. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I, maybe I'm missing something. Uh, but but I, I don't know. While Ireland, which I've also made yellow, is 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 teetering, you know, is it, it's like there's a, there's there's an ongoing discussion there. Uh, and then you have the red countries, obviously Germany, Austria, and Luxembourg. I believe that Portugal also belongs there. Uh, these are the the anti nuclear holdouts, the countries that 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 really don't want to budge. And the only thing that I want to add to this, to this, to this, the, the, the nuance and the context that is important here is that at this moment in some of these countries, it is clearly a, a left versus right issue. If the right becomes stronger, then you will see support for nuclear swelling. And if the left becomes stronger, you see that that some of these countries really don't want to have to do anything with nuclear. Uh, they're fully on the pro-renewables bandwagon and, and they will keep going in that direction. And, and you can see that in the Balkans as well. I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say about Greece or Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, Macedonia, all those countries. I, I simply don't know. And then there's the UK uh, in blue uh, because they are not a part of the European Union. So there's not much to say there, although I, I, personally I think that they will return into the European Union. Although when is, it, it, we don't know, maybe it will be by the end of this de decade or maybe somewhere uh, in, in the next decade. So let's continue because what um, this person has to do, this Joseph Sikla, he has his work cut out for it because anti-nuclear sentiments really have inundated these bureaucracies, the Dutch bureaucracy, the German bureaucracy, but also the European bureau bureaucracy. So when I when I go back to this this picture, I, I paint the nouns in a, in, in a bright green, uh, bright green color because we are planning to build four more nuclear power plants. But still, there are a lot of bureaucrats and places of power, even in the Netherlands, that say, well, that's not such a good idea. We really are invested in this renewable plan, and we really want to carry this forward, and we are unsure whether our nuclear power plants are going to, you know, remain solvable, whether they can make a profit in this new renewable paradigm that we're building. 
and that's something that you can see in a lot of levels in a lot of you know places where people have something to say about something uh, they, they think they have an authority about something and, and they can basically make sure that the engine doesn't run as smooth as, as it can uh, so so there, there's a lot of work so let's let's look into it so this is the web page of the European Parliament and here's what we can read about nuclear energy. Uh, it says nuclear energy is a low carbon alternative to fossil fuels and accounts for almost 26% of the electricity produced in the EU. However, and then you got almost a whole paragraph about, you know, what makes nuclear not really uh that appetizing for some people. It says uh, in the aftermath of the 1986 Chernobyl disaster and the 2011 uh, catastrophe in Fukushima, nuclear energy has become highly controversial. While member states choose whether to include nuclear power in their energy mix, EU legislation aims at improving the safety standards of nuclear power station and ensuring that nuclear waste is ha safely handled and disposed of. Uh, I mean, yeah, in other news, the rain is wet. Um, Let's contrast this with what they have to say about renewable energy. And this is exactly the same page. You, you, you can see it at the, at the layout. It's, it's, it's almost exactly the same. Renewable energy sources such as wind, solar, and hydroelectric power, ocean, and geothermal energy, biomass, and biofuels offer cleaner alternatives to fossil fuel. So when you look at this sentence and you... You compare that to the to the previous sentence. You already see that they 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 create a big tent, and they imply that these are the best alternatives. Nuclear isn't a great alternative. You know, is a low carbon alternative to fossil fuels. Period. And here they say, offer cleaner alternatives to fossil fuels. Right? They reduce pollution, broaden our energy options and decrease our dependence on volatile fossil fuel prices. In 2022, renewable energy accounted for 23% of the European Union's energy consumption. In 2023, lawmakers increased the Union's target for the share of renewable sources of energy in gross energy consumption from 32% to 42.5% by 2030 aiming for 45%. Now, the trouble here is that you see that they have created this idea that if you if you expand the share of renewables, that will be good. But it doesn't say what for. You know, it, it says, okay, it's a, it, it's a cleaner alternative to fossil fuels. But it doesn't say, okay, it, it, it's going to help us reduce our emissions. Because so so we we have to ask ourselves is what is what is the goal here is simply pushing for forty five percent renewable penetration including biomass including including biofuels is that going to be the goal here or you know something else so so this is this is one of the first things this is one of the first things that I believe that you should work on the way nuclear energy is presented and the way renewables are presented. And the way how we turn building a lot of renewables into the goal and the way how we say about nuclear, well, yes, people can choose to build nuclear, but we will make sure that everybody keeps to the safety and safety rules and regulations and make sure that they handle their waste efficiently and, 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 and with great care. So, so I mean, you can see in, in the language alone, there, there is this, there is this paradigm, and and you can see this also in the way some bureaucrats talk about this stuff. But there's also good news because this is uh, from early, much, much, much earlier this year when we said, okay, nuclear is officially labeled as strategic for EU's decarbonization. But and, and now we get to the the meat of things because you know there's all sorts of things that we. We put into documents and we say that we are going to, you know, try to achieve. These are our goals. When you look at the NDCs, and this is all in, this is all being being uh, collated by the United Nations, and they they make sure that everybody does their thing. So 
Everybody knows about the COPs. Everybody knows about the Paris Agreement. So the Paris Agreement was made in 2015 and in 2016. Everybody said, okay, now the Paris goals uh, are a thing and we are going to strive to achieve an X amount of carbon emission reductions per year, annual carbon emissions. So what is an NDC? Let me just read it out for you. An NDC is, an, is a national determined contribution um, and it's also a climate plan to cut emissions and adapt to climate and adapt to climate impacts. Now here, the goal is clearly defined. The goal is simply said, this is a climate plan to cut emissions, a climate plan to cut emissions. It doesn't say how you need to achieve it. It doesn't make a goal out of the means, which most countries do. So what we are going to do is we are going to check, we are going to look, so what happens is all these countries, these European countries, all these countries, each country is supposed to make their own NDC, make their own pledge. This, this is what we pledge to do. But all these countries combined, uh, all of whom are in the European Union, all of those countries hide behind the European Union. So when you go to the list, you know, the NDC registry, where you can see what countries pledged, you know, X, Y, and Z to do uh, to make sure that, uh, that, that, that climate change doesn't, doesn't, doesn't run out of hand and that we start curbing our carbon emissions. Um, whenever you find a European country, a country from the EU, then you get this, 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 this thing here, the EU NDC 2023 update. And, 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 and this is very important because none of these countries have their own NDCs. So let's see what, what, what this, this means. So first we go to the, to the, to the start of this, uh, this, this document. So this was submitted by Spain uh, and the European Commission on behalf of the European Union and its member states. And, and this is pretty interesting because, first of all, um, so we, it, it says it right here, the update of the nationally determined contribution of the European Union and its member states. Now, first of all, European Union is not a nation. It's, it, it, it's an economic cooperation. Yes, there's also some policies there and some rules and regulation, but the European Union is not a country. It's not recognized as a country. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, uh, yes, I, I get to vote for uh, some representation in the European uh, Parliament, but if you ask me, what am I a citizen of? But am I a citizen of the European Union or am I a citizen of the Netherlands? I am a citizen of the Netherlands. And all the countries within the European Union, within the European Union are uh, sovereign nations with self-determination, a great deal of self-determination. Yes, we are, we, we've made agreements that we will uh, adhere to certain rules and, 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 and regulations that we have agreed upon in order to smooth economic trade and such. But the European Union is not a nation. It's not, it, it's not a country. So this is the first thing that is strange about this. And the next, when we look for, right, so the first thing that they say is the EU INDC became its NDC when the EU ratified the Paris Agreement in October 2016 with a target of at least 40% economic, economy-wide, economy-wide reduction of greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 compared to 1990 levels. So this is a good goal. I mean, this is, this is basically what we say. However, when we say, okay, you know, the means are going to be are, are going to be mentioned in this whole thing. If I search for nuclear, it it, it doesn't say anything, right? It, it does not. It, it's simply not a part of this 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 thing. If I say low carbon, you know, and I and I press next, doesn't doesn't read it doesn't read it as well. This so so we may conclude that you know this is the technology neutral NDC, right? wrong so um 
let's see. The main domestic policies adopted in view of the climate target agreed in December 2020 are summarized in the following paragraphs, as well as in part three of this document. So let's see, what do they say? Additional legislation and policies on CO2 emissions performance standards for new passenger cars and for light commercial vehicles, renewable energy and energy efficiency, part of the Fit for 55% framework, also constitute towards the achievement of the EU's climate targets of tw for 2030. The EU ETS is emissions trading system. Let's see, but there's nothing else. So, so renewables, renewables are mentioned, but but nothing else. Um, yeah, I mean, fit for fifty five percent. We can we can look that up. Fit for fifty five package, right? And if we open that up, right, and then we say, okay, let's see. And you, you 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 can you can simply look for for renewable right so decarbonize oh this is this is for shipping fuels sustainable aviation fuels right reducing co2 emission standards for cars uh let's see reduction targets carbon border adjustment social climate fund let's let me see uh, in any case the, the renewables you can almost find them always right here this is exactly what I was looking for. The Fit for 55 package includes a proposal for a revision of the Renewable Energy Directive. The proposal is to increase the current EU level target of at least 32% of renewable energy sources in the overall energy mix to at least 40% by 2030. So this is this is this is where it all this is where the, where the rubber meets the road. In, in essence, it, it, this, here it says this is our goal. You know, it's it's our goal to to reach forty percent renewables in our primary energy mix by twenty forty. Well, let let me look for nuclear. It's nowhere, nowhere to be found. So, and this is the most important job for Joseph Sikala, I believe, and that is to make sure that uh, first of all the renewable target will include nuclear. So it will be renewable or they make it low carbon or whatever it is. But the renewable target should include nuclear or there should be an additional provision where it says renewable or nuclear or renewable and or nuclear. That, that That's one of the most important things that needs to happen very, very, fairly quickly. Uh, this is the job that he uh, he will get. He will he he, he will have to, you know, write. The proposals, he will have to make sure that everybody is on board with this and that whenever it, it, it comes to, to to a vote, that everybody says, I, we agree with this this proposal. So this is going to be very interesting. I, I, I really hope that this is going to be one of his first, uh, first um, actions because I believe that this is the most important action. It, it, it's, it's to either either get rid of the the renewable goal in and of itself because the renewable goal in and of itself it, it, it is it, i mean i mean it, it, it basically it's unpure so to say i mean the goal should be co2 reductions and by which means you do that i mean yes you have to make sure that the means that you put into use are actually going to contribute to that but when they say okay biofuels and biomass then obviously the whole the whole goal of having 45 percent renewables is already tainted it's already tainted with some kind of poison because biomass and biofuels are not sustainable but they are renewables and since everybody is chasing renewables they they might as well do biomass or biofuels when they when they get get the chance, but nuclear is still lying by the wayside, trying to step up to the plate. There's enough momentum for it. So Joseph Sikala, this is this is my plea to you. Please make sure that renewable targets become uh, either and or nuclear targets, or uh, you know get somehow become because because it's 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 unfair to france for instance 
why does France get penalized? Because they don't reach an X amount of renewables, but they have a much, much, much cleaner electricity system than Germany has. Germany doesn't get penalized because they invested a crap ton of money in renewables. But it didn't mean, but it doesn't mean that the German economy is has a lower carbon footprint than the French economy does. So there needs to be a cognitive thinking switch. And this is the, this is the, the my plea to Joseph Sikala. Make sure that people in Europe, people in the European Union, in the European Commission start realizing that having an X amount of renewables can't be the goal. And that it's unfair to penalize countries who have a lot of nuclear and a cleaner energy grid simply because they don't have an X amount of renewables in their system because it's unfair and it's illogical.